As a former engineering manager, I hate to tell you this, but technical skills and high IQ have very little to do with your success as an engineer. Stay tuned if you want to learn what factors companies actually use to identify the top performing engineers. Hi, I'm Doug Howard. First things first, why should you listen to me? Well, I'm a licensed structural engineer and engineering manager, and my biggest passion is helping engineers like you elevate your life personally and professionally. It's why I started this YouTube channel, which is 100% dedicated to helping engineers just like you so that you can build the right skills to take control of your career, create the opportunities you deserve, and become the best version of yourself. And if you're looking to put your engineering career on an accelerated path, you're gonna to wanna to hit that subscribe button. Today, I'm gonna to explain what factors engineering managers are looking for to identify the top performing engineers. When my career began, most engineering department roles were still highly specialized. Everyone had specific responsibilities, skill requirements, and expectations, with little variance in the day-to-day. -day. It was the perfect environment for the lone wolf engineer. That's my term for engineers who prefer working independently and quite frankly, prefer being left alone. The lone wolf thrived in this environment, and as long as they had the technical skills to deliver, most engineering managers were willing to look past their flaws, such as poor communication skills, being short-tempered, lack of patience, lack of professionalism. But those days are long gone, and before I explain why, I wanna know what your biggest challenge in your engineering career has been so far. Let me know in the comments. Moving on, over the last 15 years, the value of specialists and gurus in engineering has been completely negated by technology breakthroughs in design software and automation technology. The result has been completely defining roles, responsibilities, and expectations in every field of engineering. And it's still rapidly evolving. Quick sidebar, this is only the beginning because we're just approaching the fourth industrial revolution, which is gonna be an unprecedented era where you're going to see a whole new wave of technology breakthroughs in artificial intelligence, automation, 3D printing, 5G, and quantum computing, just to name a few. But that's a topic for another episode. Another thing to be aware of is the fact that there's a lot of old school companies out there who are behind the times when it comes to incorporating automation technology into their operations. In fact, you might work at one of those companies. I used to. But even those companies are starting to get on board and they're willing to play catch up now. But here's the bottom line. The more specialized and rule-based an engineering role is, the easier it is to automate the tasks that go into performing that job. And it sparked a growing trend that technical skills are simply no longer enough for you to be a successful engineer. As an engineering manager, I grew a five person department into 40 people. And in the process, I conducted more interviews and reviewed more resumes than I can even remember. But I can tell you this, technical skills and high IQ were never the deciding factor for identifying the top performing engineers. For engineers, Quite frankly, technical skills should be a given. They're basically a prerequisite to get the interview. And if you had the degree and the relevant experience, it told me that you're capable of thinking like an engineer as well as learning my company's methods and systems and processes. So in regards to your technical skills, that's really all an engineering manager needs to know. And I could measure all that up pretty quickly just by reviewing the resume. So in interviews, I was always more interested in learning how the engineer communicated, how they presented themselves, how they explained their background. I was always searching for insight and cues on how they collaborated and networked and gained popularity with colleagues too. I pay close attention to the things you can't measure, like their ability to fit in on the team, their ability to communicate with diplomacy and tact, their ability to maintain poise under pressure because engineering is a stressful job and maybe most important, their ability to take constructive criticism and learn from it versus just nodding your head and giving me lip service. Just a second, do you find these insights helpful? Let me know by hitting that like button. Okay, let's be real for a second. As an engineer, you may think this sounds unfair, but the plain and simple truth is we live in a social world and the most successful engineers have the ability to lead cross-functional teams, influence people in various departments, gain buy-in, and use their people skills to create effective solutions and resolve product issues quickly, which makes these skills invaluable and way more effective than any technical skill in today's workplace. And if you wanna learn how you can quickly and easily build these skills on your own, then subscribe to my channel. I'm Doug Howard, thanks for watching. Oh, 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 oh,